And welcome to our show, Geeks Wired Podcast, where we talk about video games, movies, TV, comic books, technology, and TLDR, the Internet of Things. And I'm your host, Bill, and this week we have Stephen. Howdy, y'all. And Anthony. Hello. And you can give us a voicemail or text us at our phone number at 801-896-4335 or 801-896-GEEK. Or you can email us at geekswired at gmail.com. And you can support us at patreon.com slash geekswired where you get the podcast early and also help support to pay the bills. And Bill will read your stuff. Yes. He loves to read it and he'll even read it on the air. If you want. If you ask. Nicely. Yeah. But I will read them. Yeah. I promise. And this week is because it is after Christmas, but and maybe even after New Year. <laughs> and all the vacations and everything, this is less topical and more general because there's the year in review, so we get to talk about all of the with our the shows we liked over the year that we did well, apps that were went well, games that were well. Yes, games, animes, and yes. apps. So Anthony oh has been very antsy about this, so we'll let him start off with his topic. Animes. Yes. The um, shows. Just this year? Just, well, do you want all of the animes or do you just want this year's animes? Mm. This year's. Let's the, do this the, year's. The top, or should okay, we come fine. back to you now? Um, No, that's fine. Uh, okay. Even if they're old, if you watched them this year, still good. Oh, there you go. Why not? Did you get How many do you want? Okay. Let's just, just, I'll, the just top. I'll just talk. I'll just talk. Um, if you ever want like an anime that you just want to cry a lot on and it's like super beautiful... Like, the animation and everything is beautiful. Uh, Violet Evergarden, would recommend that one. Totally. I also recommend Violet Evergarden. It's a beautiful story. Um, If you want something where it's just like a bunch of gore and you just don't like goblins, Goblin Slayer was a good one, too. Goblin Slayer is intense. Uh, Other ones, uh, the Shield Hero, was the Rising of the Shield Hero was one I really liked. Yeah, that had a great story. Yeah, it has a good story. It has like a good like just a lot of surprising moments and it's like kind of starts off grungy and then grungy is that the right word whatever. And then uh it gets kind of like uh gives you a good feeling basically. Yeah, and they had great characters. All the characters in that were awesome and that the action was sweet, the storyline was great. They did an awesome job on Shield Hero. That was probably one of my favorites. That I saw this year as well. Oh, and then uh, I, I have like one or two more. Uh, Overlord is really good. The if you like reading books, the light novels for that one are really good. They're like some of the most high quality books I've ever like physically held. They're just super good. Overlord. They have like What's really the premise thick pages. of Overlord? Because I have that so, in my queue, but I haven't okay, watched yeah. it. All uh, so Overlord is like uh, you know the whole the game of the in animes. There's a lot of Animes that are about like you're stuck in a video game world. Yeah, like Shield so it's, Heroes. It's kind like of that. Shield Heroes like that. But Sword Art Online. With like Overlord, kind of. it basically starts off with he's a player in a one of those VR games where they are actually like sucked in, like not sucked in, but they're like completely comatose while they're in the game. Oh, okay, so they're like plugged so, into the Matrix. Yeah, he, it's like that, and so he's in there on like the last night the the world's actually up because they're gonna shut it down after that, and then he like sh- shut he like falls asleep. And when he wakes up, like, everything, like, all the the game stuff is gone. Kay. And he's just thrown into this new world. And he's super OP. Like, very OP. I like OP characters. Like, like are we talking, like, One Punch Man OP or, like, Goku OP? <laughs> I don't know. More, I would say One Punch Man. Okay. Like, so he could, li- like, if he wanted OP. to, he could just, like, kill everyone. Okay. But. So, like, Psyche K OP. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Not maybe not quite that OP, but close. Um, and then just to round it off, another one that was good is uh, shh, I gotta find it. I have a lot on my list. Sorry, I made to narrow it down the last second. Yeah, you did. I was gonna like s- talk about this for like two hours. Wow. Oh, uh, the la- that time I got reincarnated as a slime. One of my one of my good films too. It's really like the slime is OP. Like it's just one of those main characters. It's just straight up OP. But it's OP in like a good way, like he. It's not like they uh, they just want to like wreck the world and like get all the power and everything. It's like a wholesome OP, I guess. Okay. 
Like, have you seen it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really like it. And I don't it's, know it's how funny, else to too. It. I like how funny it is. Yeah, it's, it's very funny. It, the premise is just, like, off the wall, which is cool, but they make a really good story along with it. All right, and then uh, last one. So, Sword Art, the first, like, two seasons were, like, the first one, they're stuck in the game trying to beat it. The second one it had to do with guns and stuff like that. So, it was well, kind of... first half of the second season. First, yeah, first half of, first half of the second Okay, so the first the se- so it feels like the the seasons kind of feel like two seasons alone. The it's first arcs, yeah. The first half of the first season they're stuck online. The second half of the first season is the fairies. The first half of the second season is gun gala. Yeah. The second half of the second season is using this technology for external for additional people like people that can't that are stuck in beds or that are almost that was like, actually like the last the last half of the second half. Yeah. I don't remember what the middle, the well, first half of the second half was. The the first half of the, the, the first half the of the first half second of the second season? half of the second season was Gun Gala. No, that was the first half of the second season. Yes, I'm oh. saying the second, the first half of the second half. Oh, of the second season. They were playing the fairy one, and they met people, so they were kind of. It was a lot of the the fairy stuff, and they were. Oh, and then the and Esca- is, Escalar was thrown in there somewhere, too. Yeah, they, that's how they ended up introducing, meeting the people outside more. Right, okay. So the third one is, like, one of the most, like, well, like, thought-out arcs that the guys, the, the guy, who, the artist who wrote it mm-hmm. has ever had. It's the Recollection, I think is what they call it. But basically, he's, again, stuck in a game, in, in a game world, but for different reasons. And, like, they're trying to reconstruct his brain because he got attacked and it was brain dead for five minutes mm. so anyways i r- really like that one because it's just super well thought out and like inside of this when he's stuck in this the time is accelerated and so like even though he's only been in there for like a week or two it's been like two and a half years of the uh of inside of that game world your season three. Oh, it's Al- alicization okay i was like you you say that word i can't Oh, shoot. That was season three and season... So they're on season four right now. No, no, are they on season four or are they on the second half no. of season three? So on this one, it was like... they. This is one big arc. They've split it up into two, at least two seasons. Oh. Season four was where I find... like I was reading the light novel up to the end of season three. Season four, like the first episode, after that, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, I didn't know what was going on because I had... I hadn't read past that point because that's when the translation stopped. But, yeah, it was neat. Fun. And of notables, um, since we're Bill's doing technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Um, I have Attack only on watched t- the first season of Sword Art Online, but I really liked it. Okay, so if you really liked it, I, you'd probably still like the others. The third and fourth one are just like above them. Like, it's... Like my favorite, like one of my favorite animes. That's awesome. Yeah, I really need to get into those. My problem is, and I know that this is probably not a popular opinion, but I watch dubbed anime. So I subscribe to um, Funimation because they have the most that I've found. Don't and be casual. <laughs> I, but you know what? There's been no, it's some, fine. there's been some dubs that I've read reviews on that people were like, wow, I'm really glad I gave this show another shot because the dub is actually a lot better than the subtitle. Now, they're not always so, you know what I mean? Um, but like Psyche K, I can't watch because I can't read that fast. And sometimes like I got to read a lot for work and just constantly reading. Oh, when yeah. I go you, home at the end of the day, like, I, just, sometimes, but... I just don't want to, I just don't want to read. So I just, you know, do the dub. We're going to take a pause. Good, we're back. Yeah. Okay. Um. So this is an old one. Uh, Neon Genesis Evangelica. Evangelion. J- Evangelion. I can't ever say that name right. I'm really bad with words. Anyways, uh, it's good. It, The last half is, like, disturbing. It, yeah. like, gets into a weird... It goes so deep. It, yeah. And it, so... Yeah. <laughs> so I started watching this anime when I was in fifth grade, and a lot of the concepts, like, really went over my head. But still, um, Evangelion is... Probably, if I had to say a favorite anime of all time, it would be that one. Just because it's just so intense and so crazy with the symbolism and 
all kinds of stuff. And did I just ever, thoroughly enjoyed it. Did you ever watch the movies? Yes. Okay. I didn't like the movies as much as I liked the there's, series. There's one movie where it's like basically the last two or three episodes, but from a different, from the other, like a different perspective where he went in like the opposite direction. Right. And it gets kind of disturbing Weird. and sick. <laughs> yeah. So I but, like, so my favorite animes are really, um, I like a lot of raunchy animes. So, uh, prison school is one of my favorites mm-hmm. as well. And I, one that um, I, I've heard that prison school dubbed was better than the subtitled one. Hmm. Um, and I've heard that my girlfriend or my first girlfriend is a gal is insanely better dubbed than it was subtitled. I, I can't remember the anime reviewer that I watched. I wish I did. Cause I'd give him a shout out. Cause it was cool that, cause he was one that watches subtitles only. And then his friend was like, you didn't like that anime. That anime was hilarious. And then he was like, well, how did you watch it? And it's like subtitled. And he, uh, he told him to watch it dub. And then when he watched it dubbed again, he said, Oh my God, this really? was an amazing anime. And none of this stuff came through Mm-mm. on the translation. Yeah, It depends like it on, would. it really depends on how well they translated it. Yep. If they didn't like, if there's like some jokes that only make sense yes. in Japanese or whatever yep. language it was originally from, and they just directly translate it. Yep. It doesn't really end up that way. Like, there's some weird like jokes about like taco, for example. Mm-hmm. You were to if you were to translate that and just leave the word taco there, it would make no sense. Yeah, uh, it would get yet yeah, you it would get lost in translation, like literally. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, like uh, that, w- those were two examples for sure that I could say that you know for the American audience anyway, the dubbed made it better. Now you've okay. So I'm yeah. You haven't been on long enough. Anthony knows this a lot. I, because I, I don't want to fully pay attention to this. It takes a lot of effort to watch subtitled, so uh-huh. I usually all for the dubbed uh-huh. because I can, you know, I, I don't have to read. I don't have to stare at the pictures. I don't have to have everything all in this at once, so yep. I like my dubbed. I do too. And one of them that, uh, I'm just trying to hunt it down, that I ended up really liking was the based off of World War One. Oh, 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 oh. Tanya. Tanya. Was it Tanya the Evil? Yeah, Tanya the Evil. Oh, so that was a good one, huh? Saga of Tanya the Evil, yeah. Um, It's pretty good. It's not like... But it's better... Probably my like, top 15. Dubbed, because yeah. there was a line that came out, and I was like... That was great. I don't know at, how I watched it. And they... I was... Somebody showed what the, what the subtitle was, and I was like, that does not come across. Like, what she says and the way they're feeling is definitely what they put in the English version is way better and comes across a lot better. In to the, our audience, yeah. Well, yeah. I even think with even the subtitle, like like the the words that she said and the emotions they're showing uh-huh. don't seem like they match up okay. quite as well. Yeah, and that's what, uh, like, my uh, first girlfriend is a gal. That's what that guy was saying, too. He said that there was a lot of, you know, kind of fart jokes yeah. that you would get if you knew a little bit more about American pop culture and they threw those in there because it would be appropriate at that time. And that made it like a more enjoyable experience. Mm. So I could totally see what you're saying. Yeah. How th- that the subtitle doesn't match up to the, to the scene the, yeah. and the feeling of a scene. And then you get the dub and you're like, Oh wow. Yeah. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, that's perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what, how it should be. No, I totally get that. And uh, it, it sucks for me. And and for guys like us that like the dub because it takes a while for them to get out. Oh, I'm like, not s- caught up on Sword Art because of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and season yeah, three still absolutely. isn't dubbed. I, yeah, think, I thought they just started. Oh, I thought that's what you were saying. Yeah, I would do Maybe. the same thing. Uh, I would wait for the dub. Like uh, one of my favorite animes that I discovered this year was uh, Food Wars. Have you guys watched Food Wars? Uh, no, but I think I've heard of it. Yeah, so Food Wars is an awesome anime. Uh, I just. You know, out of all my subscriptions that I pay for, so, you know, like the Netflix, Hulu, Disney yeah. Plus, all that stuff, the one that I would keep if, like, for some reason, you know, I didn't have money to pay for them and I could only keep one, the one that I would keep would be my Funimation one. Because when somebody says, I don't like anime, I don't think that that exists. I think that just means that you haven't watched enough, that you haven't found one that you like or a type or a that genre. You like. Yeah. Yeah. That, there's so like, many genres. Well, exactly. they, they might not like cartoons, but even if with that, there's still like, Oh, there's a couple of them. Cause like anime is saying like, I don't like movies. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can not like movies. That's totally that that w- that that can happen. Right. I totally get that. But yeah, there's just anime is just a way that this to, art form. Is yeah, it's an, an art, art form. form, and it's just so diverse that, like I said, I just feel like you know you haven't watched the right one if you say you don't like anime. Yeah. There's like there's ones where the, they're sad. There's ones where it's there's Extremely. drama, there's romance, yeah, there's, there's drama, comedy, yeah. there's raunchy, there's brutal, there's all kinds of kinds. And then they have, you know, of course, the Japanese names for each genre as well. But Food Wars was one that really surprised me because um, I love cooking shows and I love, you know, cooking competitions. Oh, is that what that is? You know what I mean? And oh. it's like, wow, they did an anime about food and okay, that's uh, competitions and the way that they describe the food and the over the top things that they do with the food and still keeping it realistic because these are dishes that you can actually make. Oh, nice. And it's just incredible. And I loved that. I was just like, wow, this is such a different kind of anime. It's just so cool. I mean, of course you've got your tropes, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You've got your big breasted women. You've got your, um, you know, sexual innuendos that are thrown in there and you've got the comedy aspect of it, but you've also got this and you've got, you know, everybody's in high school. This is like a yeah. crazy Supreme elite cooking high school that, you know, only the top chefs in the world can yeah. come to the school, of course. But then you've got like a seriousness to it on how they're, you know, trying to be better chefs and they've got like different niches. Like there's like a character in the second season that does uh, molecular gastronomy. And then there's somebody that relies solely on their sense of smell and Hmm. just all these cool things that I was like, wow, this is so original that I'm so glad it's doing well because they had one season and they had the second season, second plate. Those two seasons are dubbed, but there's a third season out and there's a fourth season currently uh, coming out and I'm just happy that it got popular that yeah. popular So what's curious is that the first season has 24 second season has 13 third season has 24 fourth season has 12 yeah it's just like they flip flop yeah it's almost like in the beginning they almost tried to make it one of those one shots you know where they only have a 24 mm-hmm. episode arc and then mm-hmm. it ends uh, like a lot of anime does and that might have been what happened with sword art which also season three because uh, well no the first two were huge and then you're saying the third one short. The third one, no. It wasn't short? It was the 24? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. I think. I'm, well, you're and making also, me doubt myself. It was dubbed, started being dubbed back in February. Uh-huh. So but, I'll have to go hunt it down so now. So the, the reason why Sword Art, like, there was a big gap between two and three was because I'm pretty sure they were waiting for more material to be made. Just like how Attack on Titan had, like, six to seven years well, in, in the middle. Because these were, like, little short... Or these were stories that he'd written and threw out online, and he, he had done yeah, for a competition. Else? Yeah. So there was all sorts of stuff I that think was behind all that. the light novels were starting to come out around the time that it was being and created. Okay, so this one's not the one. I'm uh, The other one is the one he went to jail, right? The, the Log Horizon? Yeah, Log yeah. Horizon is where he went to jail. Log, so. That's another good one. Another good one where they're stuck in a video game, but for different reasons. That's another. It's I think it's closer to Overlord, like the concept of Overlord at least. Except for there's more of them. And like I, have to, I do enjoy the Log Horizon Sword Art. I did get into Overlord a little bit. I need to watch Overlord. I want to watch Overlord. Yeah. Now. So I, I like that style with the video game and almost the you know almost Matrixy style. Mm-hmm. What about? Um... Netflix is Seven Deadly Sins. Did you guys watch that one? I didn't watch that. Yeah. I really liked that one. Is. That was another. Well, okay, let me take that kind of back because I really enjoyed the first season. And then in the second season, they did a few things that I feel like had been done before that never worked and they don't work in it as well. But it was still overall a good one. And they also have a movie on Netflix. So that one's only, I think you can only watch that one on Netflix. But it, it was really good. I liked right. it a lot. But, uh, you know, if I had any recommended recommendations for somebody for watching anime, probably at the top of my list, I would say Food Wars and um, Prison School. And uh, I would say Evangelion, but that might be just a little too weird for some people. Yeah. And then um, definitely Sword Art Online. Those are cool. Oh, just and the, um, the Ancient oh. Magus Bride, for sure. That one came out in 2018, but... Um, I got into it this year, and that was a insanely amazing anime. Right. Uh, oh. What? So, Anthony, what are your recommendations? For well, anime? Yeah. I went through a lot. 
Yeah. Oh, the, so the, all those were that, that was what we opened with. Oh, okay. he, he limited it himself. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I could go on and on. Like, if you look at my TV time show list, yeah. I'm, like once you start like from like three years, three or four years ago, everything from there and on, like probably not 80 90 percent of its anime yep no i'm the same way that's why i said like i couldn't give up my funimation subscription just because even if i didn't have netflix and hulu and yeah. all that i could find something on so, there i'm mm-hmm. just a positive and they have so much and they have the my, i think they have the largest collection of dubbed so my yeah my, my what's funny to me is that i got rid of my funimation and ever since then like i've had Crunchyroll just subscribe to uh-huh. And I have never t- canceled it. So yep. that's something that's, I I enjoy Funimation because Crunchyroll and Funimation were supposed to work together, and they were supposed to like, oh, we'll put more dubbed and more subbed on each other, mm-hmm. and they didn't. Right? They just I was like, I'm out, and I'll admit Funimation they have it enough, you know, dubbed. dubbed. I can like, hey, I'm I'm in on this, and yep. I sure I got uh, Tanya the Evil. Yeah. So See, I I'll have that, to go look at yeah. that one too. Yeah, absolutely. Does VRV have cr- uh, Funimation on there, or is it just Crunchyroll? Uh, it's only Crunchyroll. They used to have Funimation, and they got rid of it. Mm. I was really sad because I even subscribed to uh, VRV. VRV? Yeah, it's, it's Verve. VRV. Verve. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's VRV. Like they, they have a lot. They used to have Rooster Teeth on there as well, like Rooster Teeth first. But I don't think I don't but know if they do anymore. Rooster Teeth first upped their prices, so I would be surprised if they did. Because hmm. it used to be like ten, or it used to be five, but I think it's like eight or ten now. I, Verve. I guess see because then they, they have quite a few. I think I looked at them. Uh, they're Boomerang, Cartoon Hangover, Crunchyroll. Oh, they do roll. still have Rooster Teeth on. Okay, there. so I guess that wouldn't be bad because I'm currently subscribed to Rooster Teeth to watch Ruby. Yes, and Ruby. So I caught up on. I'm caught up on Ruby. I haven't watched the last season. yet. I ended up. Watching so I, with Ruby, I was kind of sad that they didn't have the premiere like they did last year, because last year for season six they actually had the first episode premiere in like legit theaters. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that we was fun. It in the theater. I forgot. Actually, that was like the first two, wasn't it? Uh huh. It was like a, it was like an hour, an hour and a half long. So it, it was, was like it was, so two it was or only three. the first one, but they had like I thought a they recap had like, of like oh, the okay. first two episodes, the last two episodes. Oh of five. yeah, oh, that's kind of cool that they did that. Yeah, it was really cool. They didn't have like the opening scene though, and like at the end of the the people in there were like, "But where's the opening?" <laughs> so with Ruby, I was so far behind with this season. I ran through the free stuff, mm-hmm. and it was fine. And then I ended up subscribing strictly for Genlock. Oh, really? Do you like Genlock? Yes. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Um. Uh. Uh, Michael B. Jordan it. is the main producer and the main voice behind it. Who is? Oh. Michael B. Jordan. Oh. Uh, he played uh, Johnny Flame in the newest Fantastic Four. He plays... Apollo Creed. Yeah. Son. So, yeah. He, and Adonis that in, Creed. <laughs> in um, Black Panther? Oh, or he no, played... Yeah, the, he played the bad guy in Black yeah, Panther. That's right. Yeah. But Gen Lock is only available. It was completely locked down. The only way to watch that one was you could watch the first episode for free, and the rest of them were all locked up. And this show has been done since August, so it's been out. Then they kept it under lock, and I'm like, okay, I I I like the first episode. I really want to keep watching it, so I got into it. Worth it. It was absolutely worth it. I'm like, That's I'm awesome. probably gonna have a second month of. You know, Rooster Teeth paid for. I'm not worried. I ended up getting into uh, the Nomad of Nowhere. Oh man, there's only yeah, there's only one season. It's br- it no, is no, no. What I was saying is, there's only like one, like as far as I know, like one Rooster Teeth employee on there. Lindsay's the only one that's on that cast list. Oh, for Genlock? Yeah, for Genlock. I was just curious if there was like no, if that has has people. um, uh, what's your name? Sansa Stark. I forgot her name. Oh, Maisie. Macy. Macy Williams? Yeah. It has, she's one of the voices on it. it yeah, has, she is, actually. It has oh, David she's Tennant. she's the bunny. It has David Tennant. Wow. Yeah, she's also, uh, Macy Williams is also, if you watch Doctor Who uh, a couple of years ago, she is the immortal girl. Very cool. Yes. Hmm. And know. she has her own TARDIS, which is a diner. It's stuck as a diner. <laughs> or at least they have it as, I don't know if it's stuck as a diner, but they have it as a diner. That's cool. Like an old 60s diner, 50s, 60s diner. That's sweet. So you like Nomad? Yes. So have 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 you watched Camp Camp? No. Because I, I 
I think I watched a, a couple episodes of it, and it was, it was okay, but I couldn't really get into it. I think that's... I saw the previews for it, and I kind of was like that. I was like, huh. Yeah, like, it, it's funny, but it's also kind of like... I don't know. I think <laughs> I've been enjoying it, like, the Nomad of Nowhere. Yeah, I haven't... Like, I know what it is, but I haven't... I don't know anything about it. I am, like, halfway through the season right now. I don't even know what episode I'm on. Uh, oh, no, I'm over half... I only have a few episodes left. How many seasons of that did they do? They've only done one. It's a, it is last year. So they... It actually came out... It started in March of last year and ended in September. Hmm. Well, they released that, like, once a month, maybe a couple times a month. But they had a break. I don't know. But yeah, you have like three more episodes left. It's enjoyable. Well, I guess I'll see how the final episode... But Genlock, they need to do a second season. I think they will. They, it, it honestly depends on Michael B. Jordan and a lot of them because they, they got some big names in that and show. Those guys are busy. Yeah. I totally get that. So Yeah, I had no idea that me, Macy Williams was the bunny character. Yeah. That's, That's cool. cool. I'll have to check that out. Because she was kind of fun. So with that... Yeah, I, I recommend either VRV or I guess you could do Rooster Teeth directly. Yeah, but that's like that one. You it is a only through paid subscription. So cool. Maybe when you're switching around your subscriptions. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And then have you watched Ruby at all? No, I haven't. Okay, because the first like five, four or five seasons of Ruby is on YouTube still. I think. Oh, cool. Unless they took it down, it used to be for a long time. I don't know. What wasn't it on Netflix for a while too? It was. It's not there anymore though. Oh, bummer. They the license. Uh, got. All I know from Ruby are the characters from well, actually, Ruby that are in you might cross be able tag to, battle because Blaze they Blue. have they have a thing where you can watch like they just include all the episodes into one so uh-huh. it's like a movie because if you cram all together it's like I think it's like a two hour movie oh wow because they're they're not very long episodes oh. especially the first season but that's they're yeah it's neat I really like it yeah I'll have to check that out. All right, guys. That is also one of my favorites. What do you say we talk about some video games? I guess. Okay. You don't want to make this go to 30 minutes worth of anime? Pretty close. Are we at 30 minutes? Almost 30 minutes? We're at 27 and 20 minutes. Oh, that's good. 20 seconds. I'm down with that. Oh, yeah. You just got to get three more minutes. Yeah. Let's uh, Let's see. Uh, You you wanted to look at more Genlock, so. Well, there was more Genlock, but I got to think if there was any other. Let me see if there was anything that came. It is in my TV show to, or TV time. Oh, you know what else is another good anime that I got into as well as a show called Dagashi Hashi. And that is another like crazy that sounds familiar. concept because it's all about like Japanese junk food. Never mind. And they go into like the history behind like some of these Japanese treats. And this is funny watching China junk food. <laughs> Watch Bill trying to spell it. <laughs> and it is uh no Dagashi. And um, it's like you a fifty-fifty chance, and you. <laughs> it's like a kid that like Flip works in like a no. convenience store that his family owns, and like they sell like these you know penny candies basically, but they're Japanese. It actually sparked me to buy a box of it from Amazon. <laughs> like you can get a box yeah. of fifty or a hundred assorted dagashi from Japan, and I actually got all, all these. Right. And it was so fun, like watching the show and then eating the same things that they're yeah. talking about. Nice. <laughs> But I thought it was me. like, man, so that's I've had crazy. A couple of those, like the the burnt rice ones, or have you ever had the, like the little hard candies? I I I mean, I've had so many. Oh, okay, do you know what I mean? I don't. I, I, I've, I've had so that, few, I guess. I know what you <laughs> like. The ones that stand out the biggest to me are like umaibo, which I guess translates to like tasty stick, and it's basically a giant like corn puff treat, like almost like a giant Cheeto, hmm. like a Cheeto puff thing, yeah, like and the it's pokies. in a cylinder. No, those oh. are like hard, but these are like a cylinder of like, but they're flavored. And um, the three flavors that I just fell in love with were sugar rusk, which is just amazing. There's um, there's a takoyaki one, which is those octopus balls that you can buy at Japanese restaurants. And there was a corn chowder one, which was just huh. out of this world. They were just so good. Wow. Yeah, those. Um, but yeah, check out Dagashihashi because it's a it's fun. They kind of. Um, the first season is great because they're full, like, 20, 25-minute episodes. But then the second season, it's almost like they went back to their comic roots because, you know, they all start in manga. Yeah. But they're, like, 10 minutes long, but they're not really because the opening takes, like, three minutes. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's, like, there's just barely any. And I'm just like, man, just combine those. 
So okay. it's like so Ruby. That'll be the biggest thing. I also dislike a lot about a lot of animations that uh-huh. I've watched is if you're paying enough and even actually Amazon even did this with um what's it their good and evil show. Oh, the bad omen or yeah. whatever. If you pay enough attention or to good the, omen. Yeah, good omen. If you pay enough attention, the sh- the intro spoils the season. Oh man. And also the other thing is I have definitely gotten used to Netflix and just skip intro. Yep. Like I yes, I like the song, I like the whatever else, but there's very honestly there's very few that I'm like I must listen to the intro every time. Yeah. The old, the the 90s Batman cartoon. Yep. Uh what's the um the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I must be weird. There's like most animes I won't skip it. I Ruby, I'm skipping it every week. Every time I watch it, I'm like minute 30, done. Skip it. And because they have a terrible skipping system when you after you cast it. Oh. Um let's see tr- uh Trigun was pretty good. And Trigun is awesome. What was the uh, Cowboy Bebop? Cowboy Bebop. I uh, yeah, you know what? Just I Cowboy s- Bebop. <laughs> Cow- Cowboy Bebop is one that I Cowboy Bebop Evangelion. Yeah. Uh, Evangelion for the intro and the ending. Yeah. I'll oh, watch it through. But Cowboy Bebop for the same reason. Mm-hmm. It, that's just such a quick and easy one to watch oh, and it's like it makes it, you know. I actually I mean? a bit I've tried a few times to hunt down this song so I can just like add it to a list of yep. like I like to listen to this song. No, totally. I, the, the, have you found it? I I must not have my google skills must not have been good enough oh, or my youtube skills the and it was also it, i usually like about once every couple of years like oh i should probably look this up and i usually Forget. give up after a bit yeah. uh the eggs are the series finale song for the uh whatever the blues song the abs the final final song yep, for this yep. the show yeah for that, cowboy bebop yes totally oh, one of my favorite is from that show uh, is uh, Jupiter Blues, I think it was what it was. Yeah. I just, there's just a lot of jazz and saxophone mm. in it. It's I a really cool, like saxophone. they had good music in that one. That's one that I won't skip. There's not many anime ones that I, uh, I mean, I like the song, like you said, Bill, but ultimately, like, after, if I'm going to sit there and watch 10 episodes in a row, I'll skip it after a while. Mm. Um, okay, that's fair. Uh, but, like, Evangelion, I'll listen to the intro and the end, and then the old Slayers um, anime. I used to listen to the intro and the ending to that just because yeah. I don't know. Back then, when I was younger, it was kind of like, "Whoa, it's in Japanese and it sounds so cool." Yeah. I don't know what they're saying, but it's cool, mm-hmm. you know. And and Ruby will even change what they show episode to episode. So there is, you know, it may spoil the episode, but not the season. Uh huh. And the exit, though, I the music's so so, but they show it's kind of like with Mandalorian. They show the art. Right. They show the creation of these things. And I'm like. This is kind of cool. This I get to what I get to look at the behind the scenes type of thing just for a few minutes. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Anime's sweet. All right, we got the thirty minutes. Right, we got above that. Thirty minutes. Now, sweet, sweet I guess anime. We talk about games. Yes, games. Yeah, games of twenty nineteen. Or yes. So, Steven. Yo. You started it. All right, let's do it. So, um, I played a lot of games this year. I did a lot of traveling, so I played a lot. On my Switch, I still played on my PS4. Uh, some of my highlights. Uh, my number one game of the year was uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses mm. on the Switch. I just loved that game. I think it's probably my favorite game of all time. And I know people look at me sometimes weird because they see like that I play such a variety of games. But that game I've played so much. Like, just a ridiculous amount. And it's one of those games that I typically don't beat a game multiple times, but this is one that I will. Like, I beat it once, and I'm already three-quarters of the way through my second playthrough, and I already have a plan for my third playthrough. So, yeah. Wow. So that sounds like Dark Souls to me. It's No, it's a a tactical RPG. I know. What I I meant by that was, sorry. uh, Uh, Playing those types of games? Yeah, basically, you have, like, you you beat the game, and then if you don't decide to go for New Game Plus, you have a thought of how you do your next playthrough. Yep, absolutely. Either on New Game Plus or just with a new player, a new game uh, character completely. That's exactly how I've done it with Three Houses. Like, uh, it's a tactical RPG, so it's one of those ones where you're just, like, on a board and you're moving units and then, you know, attacking other units. So it's one of those. So if you're not into those, you won't be into this. But um, the first time you play it through, you choose like a school. There's three houses. You know what I mean? There's three. And they each excel at something. Like there's the black eagles that excel at magic. There's the uh, blue lions that are just an all-around good group. 
and then there's the yellow deer or golden deer that are predominantly archers. So like through my first playthrough, I looked at like, oh man, I like these units and stuff. So on my second playthrough, I decided to do like an entire squad based around my favorite unit, which was the um, the archers that are on horseback, the bow knights. And so like it's just so cool that you can like kind of do that with it. And it's like, Oh man, look at how much I'm wrecking with these guys. Like sweet. You know what I mean? And then my third playthrough, I already have. So I chose the blue lions, the first group. And then the second group, I I'm, I'm the golden deer and the third I'll do the black Eagles. And then I'm going to just do an all magic crew of people, but it's still like held my attention that much to where I'm okay with, you know, putting that many hours and I've got like 90 hours into it. And so that was my number one game of this year. But other ones that I played that I really liked were Sekiro, of course, because I'm a huge Dark Souls fan. I played and beat all of them, oh, all yeah. the way Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. And nice my favorite care. of those, uh, Sekiro is not my favorite of them. I like Bloodborne the best. But um, it was an awesome game. The other game was, that I it's, wanted so to it say. It has nothing to do with Dark Souls. Oh, I was like, it's just Dark Souls-like. Dark Souls. Yeah, uh, so Sekiro is still made by From Software. Yeah. It's still made by those guys. And it's like a ninja one where um, the combat's a little bit different. But it's S-E-K? S-E-I-K. S-E-I-K. Sekiro. And so... Um, <laughs> 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 Bill's trying to type it into the... To, into the google yeah but it was it was really it was definitely a change but it was a welcome change and it's still a great game um the one game that i thought that was i didn't play it a lot but i really respected it was tetris 99 interesting just because i think it's so cool that you can just hop online and you're competing with a hundred other people you know what i mean i think that's so fun that concept and you can see them all playing in the background mm. so and i just think that's so cool have they it ha- has have has ugh. have people proven that it's actually like legit people? Because with Mario Kart, like for mobile, it looks like they're real people, but you can tell they're not. Yeah, I don't know honestly. With Tetris Ninety Nine, I know that when it first came out, it was probably definitely hundred well, percent people. Steam gave away a free year of the uh, the Nintendo Plus membership. Oh, yeah, the... so I'm betting a lot more people have hopped onto this. Yeah, it's 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 really a cool game if you like Tetris for sure. Um, I really enjoyed the Resident Evil 2 remake. I thought that was a really good remake of an already awesome game. That kind of showed me that, wow, when you really want to remake something good, you could do it. Um, And I know that the Resident Evil franchise in general has kind of been up and down, especially after Resident Evil 6, which I personally liked. Just it had a lot of content to it, and Mm -hmm. I liked that about it. But I understand stood people's gripes about it, but Resident Evil 2 kind of really went back to its roots of survival horror and um, Resident Evil 7, you know, before it was a really good game as well. And that kind of got people more interested in it. And then they gave you this awesome remake of like one of the favorites, you know, to me, the best Resident Evil game of all time is Resident Evil 4, but it also has Leon Kennedy and like to play as Leon Kennedy again in a, you know, more 3d free kind of control style and, basically playing Resident Evil 2 like Resident Evil 4. Mm. It was amazing. So, And I just, I sat down and beat that game in like two sittings. I just oh. couldn't stop. It was really good. Uh, the other one that I kind of wanted to give a shout out to was a, I don't know if it's a super popular game because it wasn't like a AAA title, but it was Remnant from the Ashes. And it's like Dark Souls, but with guns. And me and my friends would get together online and you know in our three person group and it's just a blast to play that game and it, it truly is like very difficult like dark souls but you're using guns and it it was just really kind of cool and um you know it's one of the it was kind of like one of those sleeper hits i feel like because i think it got really good reviews and when i picked it up i was like this is amazing so i had fond memories of that um the so, other one oh go ahead i was just gonna ask if was is it kind of like how Dark Souls was kind of like a like a, like an immediate success, even though no one really knew about it till it came out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I had to guess it, that that's that's how it was because I know a lot of people that have played it and they were just super into it, and it's it's really fun. Um, it's got all kinds of fun stuff to do in it, and it's hard, man. That game is really really hard. Uh, we've you know 
my three player squad has fought bosses over and over and over and over and over again. And it's just like the difficulties there for sure. Uh, the other one that's, you know, it feels like this year was like the, the year for those dark souls clones really. I mean, there's so many that came out and they're all, you know, in their own right, pretty, pretty good. Um, Jedi fallen order falls under that category. So that's the Mm -hmm. new star Wars game. And it is basically a dark souls star Wars game. And it's incredible. Now the difficulty of Jedi fallen order, I don't feel like is up there with dark souls, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's completely fine to me. To me, I don't play dark souls and, and those games for the difficulty. I know they are difficult and it, you know, that is kind of, a draw not really because i like easier games i like a game that i can just sit down and beat so that, that kind of touches on a weird thing for me like dark souls i remember really liking because it was hard uh-huh. and i just it was fun like going into like uh turning a corner and literally dying yeah but yeah. now a new game like a game similar to that like i can't get into it yeah like if it's hard i just i give up like not necessarily hard but like if it's just unforgivingly hard right right it's just not fun anymore. So I, I don't I don't know how that's changed. Like, so I that's a that good happened. that's a good segue because Jedi Fallen Order is very Dark Soul esque for sure. Like hands down, I mean they take so much from it from like the map design to the combat. Um, I'd say Dark it's it's like a it's like Dark Souls and Sekiro together because there's a lot of emphasis on defense as well whereas like in Dark Souls it's more about offense I feel like like Bloodborne is like 100% offense uh Dark Souls kind of goes back and forth but Sekiro is like I feel like all about defense Jedi Fallen Order is another one of those that's a really good mix between mm-hmm. the two um but as far as difficulty goes I know that these aren't accessible games to people because sometimes they can be difficult and I feel like EA and you know it's funny because it's like blasphemy to, to say this but they actually produced something really good here because they figured out how to make one of these games and then make it accessible because there's actually a difficulty setting on it now it doesn't to my knowledge it doesn't change the game in any way except for you deal more damage and enemies deal less damage to you, which I really like. So you can, you know, have more swings of your sword and not get worried about, you know, getting one shotted by a boss. And I think that that makes it way accessible. And I think that, um, future dark souls clones are going to utilize that because I feel like they did it really well. Like if you want it to be hard, crank up the difficulty, you know what I mean? If you want to, you know, have to com- if you want your combat to be- have to be perfect, and you know punishing crank up the difficulty and you'll get that well, in jedi the witcher 3 kind of like that too I, um like it had a difficulty rating where you like you set it to easy if you wanted like the storyline basically right then you had normal where it was at play as intended and then you had hard where it was harder right and i think that that's probably true okay um, I, I played the witcher 3 a lot but i just played it on normal mm-hmm. and um but i bet it it was similar because i don't think that you know, with a game that big, you just can't reprogram it to have yeah. less enemies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Do you know what I mean? So they've just got to have it scaled. So, oh, you want it on easy so you get the story? Well, then these goblins are only going to take a couple swipes of your sword before they're dead, which I think that's good. Do you know what I mean? I think it. I think you'll sell more copies that way. And I'm not trying to take away from anybody because, like I said, I beat all the Dark Souls and that Bloodborne and all that, and I enjoyed the difficulty. But at the same time, like I respect a company that wants to get those types of games into more hands. Yeah. So it also looking into it was based uh inspired by Batman Arkham Asylum. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there a lot of the playthrough and then go back and play through again to unlock the areas that were locked before? Yeah, so uh you know there's a big de- debate and even me and my roommate have talked about it um you know whether Dark Souls is a Metroidvania game. And, you know, some people say yes, some people say no. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're they're like, no, it's not in 2D, but it still is like that. Do you know what I mean? And Jedi Fallen Order is more like that because you can only access certain areas when you have a certain power or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or a certain upgrade. So I feel like, yeah, it is like that because I've done a lot of backtracking and they have a neat map system that tells you, like, right off the bat, this is a red. You don't have the power up. And then it turns, you know, blue or green or something when you do have the power up. Oh, nice. So that you know, like, oh, I can go into that locked door finally and yeah. whatever, you know. And, you know, it's a fantastic game. And I, you know, I almost say that it's the best Star Wars game that I've ever played. Nice. With the exceptions being uh, Knights of the Old Republic mm. RPGs. 
So it, it was a really, really pleasant surprise. So with also Star Wars, especially now that Disney has it, everything that comes out is canon. Absolutely. So this is five years after Order 66. Yep. What do you think of it? Oh, man. So it that's the other thing. Okay, so a good Star Wars game doesn't necessarily just come back um come down to the to the uh gameplay because you know the force unleashed 2 i didn't think was that great of a game but mm-hmm. the force unleashed 1 was amazing because it had the story and the yeah. gameplay so this has a great story nice like that more stories can be told from it and you'll see recognizable characters and and you know you could easily make and, disney could easily do something more with that yeah. game for sure and well this is also during the same time period as rebels uh mandalorian yep. actually so these all these like other things all these shows yep. and even some of the comics are actually all mixing in at this time period yep and i wouldn't doubt that like and i'm sure they're going to do a sequel to this because it was such a great game but i wouldn't doubt that you'll see some other media that displays the characters yeah. that you see in fallen order and the other nice thing about this one, because why EA has usually gotten the bad rap about, oh, you, you make terrible Star Wars games, is the uh-huh. problem is they have to make this game. They're only given X amount of time to release it, and it has to be amazing, and they can't release any secrets that it has. Yep. Nice thing about this, new character. Yep. Story was brand new to them. They, could, they, they had their time to really build it up and yep. keep it under wraps. Nobody was really hunting it down. Even if it would have leaked, it would have been like, oh, that's nothing to do with the new movie coming out, so uh, just toss that to the side. Yep. No, yeah, it's it, it was a really incredible game. Nice. So I played two... Well, I didn't play um, two bad games. Well, I played one of the bad games that I thought was bad. Uh, the two bad games of this year that I thought were Kingdom Hearts 3. I just did not like the what they did with it. Um, You know, and some people loved it. Some people didn't. Uh, I just didn't think it was a great at all for how long you had to wait for that game it was just like so big letdown did they legit not have any uh of the final fantasy characters in there at all yeah i didn't see any of Jeez. them yeah that was like the big thing for him too yeah well one of the big things yeah it was kind of a bummer and the other one that uh i thought was uh, so i had these like split up into the good and i already mm-hmm. talked about the good i have the good the bad and the ugly and on the fence yeah so well, we might bad. have to do a lightning round with some of these because we're already re- <laughs> yeah, no, the no, first no. half. <laughs> so the other one that I understood why people didn't really like was the first Pokemon on consoles, Pokemon Sword and Shield, that didn't include like every single Pokemon ever made. And I thought that was a bad move for them because this is the first one on consoles. Consoles are supposed to be bigger, so this game should have been bigger. Mm-hmm. So, so the ugly was Anthem. I had a fun time playing it while it was out, but I respected all the bad things about it because it was really bad but i did put a bunch of hours into it you know in the first month and then it just kind of faded away uh the other ugly i said was the legend of zelda Link's awakening and i'm sure people are like what the heck are you talking about the game's awesome and yes that game is awesome but that game was not a 60 dollar game that's that was my biggest gripe with that that yeah i did pay my 60 dollars for it because i wanted to play it really bad but at the end of the day i was like man these remakes need a kind of like whatever well the past well i don't know about with nintendo but other remakes have been like usually 40 like spiral yes. and crash were 40 yeah. see and if they would have had a price point like that i have no complaints but i was just like dang man really because the resident evil 2 remake although it was a remake it was a completely new experience and it like was completely overhauled it was way different if they would have made zelda's link awakening in 3d like the breath of the wild style mm-hmm. it would have been like whoa but they didn't and on the fence is death stranding i love kojima and i love the metal gear s- series but um i just uh i can't pull the trigger on that one yet there's just i've seen too many mixed oh. things about it and i'm just kind of like i'm sure that the story is great and it's won all kinds of game of the year awards already but I just need to see that one for myself. I'm not 100% sold on it like I thought I was going to be because when I first heard of it, I was like, yeah, that's a day one purchase, but it turned out not to be. Mm -hmm. And the things I'm playing right now, I'm just playing two games. I'm playing Ghost Recon um, Breakpoint, which is awesome. If you enjoyed Wildlands, you'll enjoy that because I think it's pretty similar. And uh, Code Vein, which is basically an anime Dark Souls that's absolutely incredible. So, what do you guys think about games? 
So the only one I can think of that was like one of my favorite ones. It's not one that came out this year or even last year, I think, really, but uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Breath of the Wild. I awesome. actually went through and like I I had to look it up on a lot of this, but I went through and found all the the shrines and like got them all. Yep. Nice. I thought about doing the Karak seeds, but I gave up on that idea. Yeah, there's so there's many collectibles. Nine hundred of them. Yeah, that but, game is gonna be. They're they're developing a sequel, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. They are. It is a direct se- sequel to mm-hmm. that game, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, it is because they haven't. I don't. They've never done that with a Zelda game. I don't think. Yeah. No. Um, there's, well, I think was Link's Awake the second. Yeah. No, there was like the. I think that was a direct sequel. The, the Super Nintendo one. A Super Nintendo. A Link to the Past or something like no, that. No, no. I mean the one on the NES where like they had the first one, just the oh. Legend of Zelda, and then they had one. Which was a side scroller for the yeah, most part. Yeah, the second Zelda. I think that one was a direct sequel, but I might be wrong. Yeah, I can't remember if that one because they but, have a weird timeline in Zelda games. Yeah, but they, they also had like a sequel to a sequel or a prequel to the one of the top down ones that was on Super Nintendo, and that was the one that was on the 3DS. So they had a Link Between Worlds, and they had a Link to the Past. Yeah, a Link Between Worlds was on the 3DS. Yeah. And a link to the, so the link between the two worlds is either a sequel or a prequel to the link between time. Or I think whatever. it was just a spiritual success. Like it, it was a remake with a twist. I think is what it was supposed to be. Yeah, and I liked that one. It was yeah. pretty good. It was good. But the reason why I liked the Breath of the Wild is just that they just have so many fun like little quirks in it. Yeah, and just like you can just be out in the middle of the field and it's like it's enjoyable. literally yeah it's enjoyable. It's one of the most like. Game like it's a game that I get a lot of enjoyment out of, and there's a lot of like, like there's lo-fi playlists of it. There's like other playlists of it where it's just like, there's a there's a play uh, soundtrack that I listen to called Zelda and Chill, uh-huh. which is just like lo-fi beats of Zelda, and it's just awesome. That's awesome. And yeah, I really but, like Breath of the Wild. Um, I still haven't beaten it yet. I put a ton of hours into it, but it's one of those games that every time I pick it up, I enjoy it. Yes. And, you know, my only gripe with that was the expendable weapons that have durability. But even with that, I still think it's awesome. So I was annoyed at that at first, but it, I, th- I don't think I came up with this myself, but someone else brought it to, up to me. It makes you experiment with other types of weapons that you wouldn't normally have. Done. Yeah. Because, like, you have a sword. Like, you usually get the Master Sword pretty early on in a Zelda game. Not in this one, but normally you just swing a sword around or you want to swing a sword. But sometimes... It breaks, and you have no other weapons because your inventory is so small. Yeah. So you got to go find a twig or a torch somewhere, light it on yep. fire, and then just start wailing. Yep. Or you got to start using your bombs and, like, throw them. And, like, there are some of those monsters are smart enough that if you throw a bomb at them, they'll pick it up and throw it right back. Yep. And yep. then it just it blows up on you instead. Like, yeah. there's just a lot of, like, stuff that the developers really put a lot of time in, and you can tell that they liked developing it. Absolutely. No, they that was an incredible game, and it was definitely you know, and it was a game that you know my roommate was telling me that they kind of took a theme, and that theme was climbing, and that was another cool thing yeah, about I it. Like you that. know what I mean? Just like what a weird thing to add in a Zelda game that I would have never thought would have been a big deal. Yeah, climbing, gliding, uh, just I think the ability to jump. Well, jumping, <laughs> jumping too. Not very high, mind you. Jumped. He he left the ground. Both feet left ground. Yeah, same both time. Both feet left the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and that know. provides a lot of. Yeah. It's just like it's literally like I. I'll probably play through it again, but it's one of my favorites. Yeah. No, it's incredible. The games that I'm most look uh, looking forward to in this coming year definitely Final Fantasy VII remake is on the top of my list. Is that uh, actually finally coming out? Yeah, on March twentieth. How much of a remake is it? It's like a full remake in the sense that this first game, I know they call it Final Fantasy VII Remake, but if I'm not mistaken, they're making three games. I think it's episodic, isn't it? Yes. So they said, like, you know, the first one's going to have, you know, 40 to 60 hours of content or whatever. We'll see. Hopefully it does. But they're not, it's not going to be an in, you know, end all right there Mm -hmm. from that game. This is going to be like the first of, you know, there's going to be 30% of the game that you're going to play through, but it's like a full overhaul. The battle system's completely yeah, that's, different. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And that's, if that's why it's taken so long and it's a good change, then sure, that's fine. Yep. I have, I never played the first one, like the the original, but. Yep. Yeah, I played the original. Oh, that was the other thing that uh, really sold my roommate was that you'll actually be able to play it turn-based in classic mode. 
on the game. So if you like the old school, you know, where you select attack and attack instead of being the new active battle mm-hmm. system, you can actually put it like that. So already I can already tell that that will be a game that I beat twice. I'm going to beat it the first time just the way it's meant to be played, how they came out with the new action thing, mm-hmm. and then I'm just going to play it right over again where it's just the classic mode with just updated graphics. Yeah. So that'll be fun. The other one that I'm looking forward to is uh, by um, CD Projekt, the guys that did The Witcher 3, and that's Cyberpunk 2077. <gasps> oh, my goodness. That's finally coming out? Yep. That'll be coming out in April. So you'll have Final Fantasy VII Remake. I forgot about that. And then you'll that. have Cyberpunk 2077. Did they advertise this at CES last year or was it? Uh, they also advertised it in like 2012 and then there was Uh, nothing on it for like six or seven years well they got keanu reeves behind it now yep yeah he's a character in the in the game i just remember being super excited for this game and then it's crickets like literally crickets Ah. yeah and that's what they said too is that we're gonna tell you that it's gonna come out but then we're just gonna be quiet up until we're really close to releasing it yeah yeah well april 16th yep which is smart because anything that comes out in March is doomed because of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? And then the last one that I'm excited about, and I think it'll be a PS5 last uh, released title. No. Oh, because um, that's supposed to be coming out soon too. Tales of last Arise. Of it's a, another in the anime RPG Tales series. Tales of Arise looks absolutely phenomenal. And I don't think it'll be on PlayStation. I'm sure they'll make a PlayStation 4 version, but I think it'll be in the early it depends. time of if it's, the PS5. If it's a first-party title, I can very well see it being a... Oh, uh, it, 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 it's not a first-party title. It's a third-party title, okay. but it's um, it still looks really good. I like all the Tales games. And that this one it especially looks, looks freaking amazing. Okay, oh, uh, going back to the first half, the, the anime is actually... Uh-huh. I, I, I forget which one I ended up watching, but I watched one of the Tales that... Yeah. Uh, where he's like the chosen one or something like that. He has to like yeah. They have a couple. His power. Of, I think it's Tales almost, of Zesteria is one of them. Yeah, ones. that one. Yeah, yeah. It was, that one's enjoyable. It's like oh, it's kind of like a Avatarish type of story. And yep. oh, the tales have nothing to do with each other. Really, they're no, just individual. they're way different. Yeah. It's almost like a. It's almost like Zelda in that sense, except for in Tales, they're all new characters. Yeah, and they've had sequels. And different though. magic. Well, and even different magic systems between them too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Yeah, and it's always been about active combat. And it's um, always been anime, mm. which I like those anime RPGs, yeah. and especially when they do them good, like the Tail series. And so what's and are, what's funny is that the cartoons that are made are an advertisement for the game. Yep, that's why they're usually they're like a one season, one off, run through it. And, and I love that man. Like, like wow. one of my favorite things, like my favorite fighting game when I was a kid was Fatal Fury. Mm. And one of the reasons why it was my favorite fighting game was because they had an an- they had anime movies based on Fatal Fury, and mm. I loved that. I wish Street Fighter back then. I wish I would have had access to more of it because they just didn't do that. They had a cartoon yeah. that was American that had nothing to do with yeah. the lore. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But then they did have a couple animes that were pretty good, but I didn't see those until later. But I really liked getting into the fighting games like uh, Blaze Blue has an anime and. Mm-hmm. It's just cool to watch your characters that you fight with and stuff. You know, yeah. Even my daughter, she plays Blaze Blue. And then she went and watched the Blaze Blue anime. And she's like, wow, this is so cool. Because when you're playing the game, it's just two characters fighting each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then when you watch the anime, it's like you get the story. Because she's not big on the story mode within the game. Mm-hmm. But she just likes fighting. But then she likes watching just the show. Yeah. So. Well, and that's even with the uh, Sword Art Online games that have been coming out, there's even one that's like it's you are another character that's in the story. And I'm kind of so so about the oh I'm following literally the anime, but I'm my existence is tweaking things. Uh-huh. And it was originally like oh this is kind of cool, and now I'm like as I kind of got further into it, I'm like I'm not sure if this can keep my attention. You're <laughs> <laughs> talking about the MMO one, one of the one of the d- MMO ones. Yeah, one of them all like pseudo MMOs kind of. They, well, they, they definitely got better as they went along. Like some of them, they, they there's a lot of MMOs out there for mobile now, uh-huh. and some are more MMO than others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the thing with that is like the MMO for the mobile like it is MMO in that there's multiple players. There's multiple <laughs> players that you, that you play with and it and, and it's an RPG an so RPG. you still yeah. you're building up your character and their classes and their stuff, but it's definitely like early days MMO. I wouldn't uh, even say that. Or not, I mean no, not early days. Early days RPG that happens to be online. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay. it's like uh, yeah, it, it was fun, and it was one of those, like, I don't like playing on my phone, 
So if it was on the desktop, I would probably would have went into that game hard. You would have gotten more okay. into it because I like that game. So I in the last nice. like few mo- moments, that's my thing. It was worth the time. No, I wasn't glaring. I was uh, glaring at you, but I wasn't glaring at you. No, the time. It's like to. whoa, it's the time. Is I I'm in the mobile and I was showing you guys like I that bought a little sweet. controller that my phone literally sets in, and your phone will die for bat. It'll just burn through battery use. It has a fan. It'll overheat. It, I add, like, suddenly all my fingers are actually useful instead of just my thumb trying to click on everything. And I play Call of Duty on the, the mobile game. I like, I think I'm liking that a little better in PUBG. Mm-hmm. I play, I'm playing Right Out Heroes a lot more, which is like uh, Fortnite kind okay. of, but less building and even more spells. And, like, there's, there, I kind of like that one a little better. There was a mech one that I actually was playing. I, I think I currently got rid of it, but I bounce back and forth between them sometimes. And it was, you know, I enjoyed the mech and the jumping and the, you know, the building is fun sometimes, but, you know, it's, you know, I, Call of Duty is my shooter, my standard general shooter. Uh-huh. Go to these other ones to kind of get the other ideas of games and all that. The mechs are fun because you, you actually run around as an individual and then you call your mech and you jump into it and you go fight, but your mech can be destroyed and then you're just this person running around and you can <laughs> you can take out the mechs t- individually. Kind of like Titanfall. Yeah, and it's, but it's you know sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's not too bad. Like I they usually throw these things that just like these little robots that take care of the mechs for me. I'm like, you go, Gail, kill that thing, and I'm <laughs> out. And they even like they start because people start like, okay, I gotta kill you. Or oh, you just launched a bunch of mini mechs at me. I gotta go take care of these things because they're gonna kill me before I officially nail you down and kill you. And I just start running, or I start like just running backwards, lobbing these things out until my <laughs> mech is ready to rebuild. So the reason why I don't like mobile stuff is that it may, like my neck, I have neck pain problems, and I don't uh, like if I like look down, mm-hmm. it stresses that all out a lot, and so that's why. I, I get see. that. I'm not a giant mobile player myself either. I like to play things on PC or I like to play things on console. But I, like uh, I do controller. like to uh, play, you know, my Nintendo Switch in portable mode a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I like that. That's why I like mobile. Is like, oh, I'm just gonna like pull this out and play this game real quick. Yep. And getting the controller, I've made it. Go, it starts moving it back towards the console slash Experience. Yep. game. You know, PC where I'm like, okay, now this is an event. This is <laughs> I am doing this. It's not just like I'm pulling up my phone and just gonna play a quick like that's the other thing. Like these even the Fortnite games, uh I like the, the super short runs mm-hmm. where they're you know the storm is already small mm-hmm. and it's like fifty people drop in, the storm is small, you you've got five, ten minutes tops mm-hmm. and to and you'll become number one or you'll be wiped out. Maybe the games will be shorter, but yeah. yeah. So it's that's why I, you know, because I can like PUBG, I can spend an hour in the game and get anywhere from first place to well tenth to first place, and I've spent an hour in this game. Right. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know if I want to spend this much. Like a yeah. quick ten minute game, I'm done. I'm out. Yep, and like PUBG a match almost, almost yeah. like just mm-hmm. a little match. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally get that. Especially you know people that are in college and stuff that want to study. Those are you know I remember when I was working with uh, Geek Revolt, I did a article on that on that those games that you can pick up like what to do when you're studying it's kind of like all right fighting games are good you know mm. you say i'm gonna play five matches or call of duty yeah. is good because it's like i'm gonna play two matches and be done but these games like Fortnite, these uh battle arenas sometimes they drag out or like dota yeah. and um what is the other one league of legends like yeah. those games can take like forever yeah mm-hmm. so, so. a small tangent to that uh if you like League of Legends but you don't like the games taking forever, uh, Heroes of the Storm was a nice one. It was by Blizzard. Mm. It the games usually the matches lasted between ten and fifteen minutes, but it's something I really like playing. But is I had Heroes to play of the Storm. Like, is it free to play, or is that one that you have to buy? I bought it. But I think it was because I wanted to be into the closed beta. Oh, like the founder kind of thing. Kind of like not super founder because there were alpha players that you that you found every once in a while. But yeah, so I think it is free to play. Yes, it yeah, is. it is nice. But yeah, it's is it a faster base kind of one of those? Yeah, it's faster, and you don't like like with League of Legends, you have you collect coins and you have to figure out what you want to buy and stuff. But where with League with this, you're just like. You just True. get abil- like you pick abilities as you as you, as level, you level up. up. But I think your like t- your team level, of. yeah, 
your team level ups, not you individually. Oh, okay. And you don't have to go back to base to pick the levels. You just pick them right there. I need to download that. I need to play that. I'd like to try that, actually, because I really, really liked Overwatch, and I'll definitely you know, get Overwatch 2. But um, be I'm Overwatch just curious because, like, yeah, yeah, there is. Is it going to have a campaign? Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm totally excited now because the first yeah. Overwatch was supposed to have a campaign and it didn't. The Overwatch 2 is, like, very focused on co-op more than PvP. Like, the first game was, like, all PvP. It's, like, what that game was made for, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this next one seems to have a predilection towards co-op. Like, the trailer kind of shows that they're trying, they even say it, like, co-op. It's released on November 1st. I'm way out of the loop. So, (laughs) I'm really excited for Overwatch 2. My mom, actually, was the one that bought me Overwatch. And I, I mean, this was, like, year, maybe two years after it was out. And... Because that game's pretty old, isn't it? Like three or four years old? Uh, Yeah, I think it came out in 2016 or something. Yeah, so I uh, you know, was late into it. But that was another one where I watched all the CG movies. I thought the characters looked cool. And then she bought it for me, you know, and I played a lot of it. The lore for this, that game is really, really cool. Yeah, I really, really like it. And those cinematics, that, the cinematic movies that they make are so cool. And I don't know, that I feel like more immersed when I can see them in some kind of action that's cinematic. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really do like when games do that. So when I was watching it, you know, of course you get to see the characters and you're like, man, that, that one's cool. I want to play as that one. You know what I mean? And then ultimately you end up settling on your play style, but it's just cool to be able to go back and watch those and be like, wow, that was so crazy that they actually did that. And I forgot yeah. the other games kind of, I'm looking forward to oh, yeah. Diablo four. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They have gameplay of that already. And Diablo, whatever the mobile one's going to be. Yeah, I'm curious as to what that one? is actually going to be. They, they announced the mobile one like a year before Diablo 4. It was the biggest disappointment of the BlizzCon that year. Yes. Oh, was it? Yep. All right, we should probably wrap it up. We've gone way long. Okay. So, okay. famous last words. I went first last time. Actually, right. like the last four times. I'll go first this time. Okay, go for it. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. Gotta catch a ball. Pokemon. Should I just put in parentheses that Anthony is shaking his head? Insert Anthony's <laughs> final words here. <laughs>